Welcome to this afternoon's uh, PTIC meeting. Um, I'm disappointed and um, feel slightly um, uh, isolated uh, here. I'm the only one so far that I've seen that's done the uh, Christmas jumpers that we said we'd do last time. I didn't put my hat on though. I thought that was one step too far. So uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it still feels a long way before Christmas. Really, for the oh, there we go, Teresa. Well done, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent, right? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so, um, I've got apologies from Adrian Falconer from uh, the DFT. Um, data team and Mark Jones from EP Morris. Um, I don't know whether we've got any more, Teresa. Uh, no, not that team. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, minutes of the last meeting, which was the 7th of October. Um, they were circulated a couple of days ago. Thank you, Teresa, for your work on it. Um, the video is also available. Um, so if there's any matters of accuracy on them, then uh, please do shout up. Um, first um, action under BODS. Um, Find, I was going to find out how many operators are actually on board with it. Um, there's uh, there's an increasing number. Um, there's a lot more that are engaged with um, BODs and loading data up that haven't pressed the publish button. And so uh, those of us on this side of the fence um, can only see those that have actually published. But uh, that's increasing significantly um over uh the days and the weeks um so um we they're getting there but um i think when we come to the uh, the update we'll still find that uh, quite a long way short of the uh, of the target number but um uh you can actually go on to the uh, explore bit of the bod portal and see how many operators are publishing um, which data sets yourselves now, uh, which is quite useful. Um, then next actions was in section about bus stops. Um, Mike Baxter from Leicester was reporting a problem with corrupt CSV files and was going to send Adrian some um, information. Have you had anything back, Mike? Um, I've not checked since since that last time, but I have I have um, provided information to Giuseppe. Giuseppe, can't remember his his other name. Yeah, Giuseppe uh, Salazar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, and he was certainly looking to, looking into it. Uh, I imagine that Mark um, Mark Taylor would know whether it's been fixed because he uses it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, just, just so you're aware, Giuseppe has now left DFT and he's moved on to NHS X. So I don't know whether you have any other contact. If you haven't, do you want me to find who it should be? Uh, Ad okay. Adrian's the best person about with Naptan. He's he's leading the Naptan project um, and looking after all of those issues. Um, but it's uh, Jason's taken over um, in the okay. interim from Giuseppe. Okay, good. Jason, who? Um, I knew as soon as I said Jason, somebody was going to ask. Then you're not talking about the programming uh, interface, are you? Are you talking about a person? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, oh, the jokes keep flying this afternoon. Sorry. Yeah. Chat with the guy James, that with sorry, James Hutchins. James Hutchins. Yeah. Yeah. 
not Jason. I don't know where Jason came from. It probably was the interface that I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, then there's an action for me to circulate details of the Naptan um, working groups. Um, that was done, and there have been two since we last met one for data consumers and one for um, data uploaders. Uh, we'll come on to that though. Uh, under the agenda, um, then under the BODS issues log, um, I was checking whether we could make it updates available on the PTIC website. Um, there have not been that many updates um, since the last meeting, to be honest. Um, but uh, as I get them, I do load them up um, on there. Um, then um, under Travel Line projects, um, Amy or somebody from Travel Line was going to follow up and explore um, about providing insight into the data integrity and split between BODS and CNDS. Um, we've got Amy on the call, I think. We can't hear you, Amy. You're unmuted, but we can't hear. No, we'll come back to uh, Amy in a bit then. Um, and um, again, there's another one for Amy about getting back to Ian Barrett about formats that Travel Line um, will accept. Um, so we'll see whether I uh, can hear Amy in a bit okay um that's it for the minutes is there anything else no okay excellent um in which case um bus open data digital service um we've got uh lisa uh give you on the call because um um, yep, and me as well, uh, Jan. Uh, I'll be doing a yeah. short presentation as well. Apologies, I can't get the camera to work. It doesn't seem to recognise my camera. Um, but I'll see if I can share my screen. Yeah. So can anyone, everyone, see the slides? The slide. Yes, we can. Okay, so this is just a short uh, presentation of, as an update on the bus open data service. And uh, let me just start with, if it lets me do it, a few headline figures uh, on the current uh, status of a bus open data service. Uh, out of approximately 600 uh, operators, we have 314 registered operators on the service now and currently 81 operators publishing timetables to BODS. AWARE was 65 last week, which was a significant increase. Um, and of that, there are 200, which represents 291 published data sets, which might comprise of hundreds of services, which, um, and so the number of services to be confirmed uh, of 16, a thousand. We are still working on the data set and measuring uh, the number of services that represents. And uh, on the location data side, we have approximately 9,500 vehicles of 32,500, uh, uh, which will rise to 15,000 in the next few weeks once we get uh, VIX in, uh, in it, I believe, rather, uh, onboarded. And um, for fares, we have currently 69 data sets, um, uh, and we will be working to confirm what that, how much that represents out of 16,000. And this is just a list of service uh, of operators that published last week. 
And uh, just to give a summary of the work we've been doing, as I mentioned before, there were 81 operators publishing timetables, 39 publishing location, and 19 publishing first data. And uh, the big news for the last few weeks, uh, last two weeks, is that both fairs and agent mode functionality has now been released to production, which means that all BOS functionality is now online. Uh, which uh, allows us to start work on um, requesting all operators now to start publishing ahead of a, a statutory deadline at the 31st of December. And um, we are working on, continuing to work on uh, uh, requesting uh, operators to provide capacity and crowding data to uh, third party operators, developers rather, via BODS for our COVID 19 response. And to that uh, effect, we have written to so so far to Ticketer, Vix, Flowbird, and Init, uh, asking them to um, work with developers to provide that data. Um, on the NAPTAN dataset side, uh, overall 59 of the 87 LTAs have updated their datasets, and the data quality work continues with the KPMG team. On the enforcement side, we are continuing to work with regulators in DVSA and OTC uh, and uh, drafting a letter uh, on the enforcement strategy to be issued to operators. And on the uh, statistics side, we're working on uh, development of a BOD scorecards to support benefits realization and benefits tracking. And program plans and communication plans are being finalized and contracts to be set up for 2021 ahead of the official launch. Um, and we are we are working with Ticketer Optibus and Omnibus to provide extensive support to operators to publish timelines and uh, timetable and location data. And um, on agent mode, uh, agent mode means as you will probably know, the local authorities can now support small operators to publish data. Um, and if you have a capacity and crowding feed, Ticketer will not charge to provide this to BODs. And um, so we're working with tech suppliers and confirm the version of TXC is, um, the TXC profile is the 2.4 version 1.0 rather than the 1.1. Uh, due to our uh, discussions and the viability of moving to 1.1 in such short notice. And we're actively involved now in setting up a dedicated support desk uh, for operators with KPMG. And uh, so we've also communicated, as I said before, that we're publishing guidance and that we're going to reiterate the fact that our decision is that in 2021 will be the con considered a transition year for BODs rather than the original uh, 31st of December 2020 date. And um, yeah, we're continuing working with Traveline on the TNDS transition plan for 2021, given the uh, risk of data gaps as uh, as publishers move towards publishing directly onto BODs instead of the TNDS database. And uh, we're continuing to work with local authorities and we have a, um, a series of workshops in Eventbrite throughout the uh, last few months and the coming months to help local authorities and publishers, uh, local authorities to become agents and publishers to publish correctly. And as a final point, the BODs Implementation guide has been updated and will be published shortly, which Lisa will be able to give us an update on if she can undo. Yes. Yeah, so it's nearly ready to go. Um, we're just waiting for some internal clearances um, before we press the button on publish. So, and it'll be in HTML format. So um, that means that we can keep it up to date and if anything changes, um, you know, we don't have to wait and go through all these processes again. And uh, let us know if you've got any We'll send an update through the newsletter once, once it's published. Yes, and let us know if you've got any questions for the above update.
Thank you both uh, for that. That's a, uh, a very useful um, uh, run through the update. Um, so the guidance is going to be published shortly from what you say, and it's going to be in HTML form. One of the concerns that people have um, had in the past with something that's as easy to change um, as a web page is how do, how do people get notified if, if that guidance changes or is updated? Um, that's a good point. Well, well, I suppose it might be just if it was a big changes, we'll let everybody know probably through the newsletter, but um, it might just be for some of, some of the stuff that's in there now, um, a lot of it's kind of telling the story, so like number of operators published. Um, so we'll just, I suppose, that those kind of things, they will just kind of keep up to date, but anything that's larger will always go through um, stakeholders and publicise that. Um, so, so yeah, we've updated the the, the, the general .gov uk web pages already, um, so some some information is there. Um, but I don't know if there's like for every gov page ability to sign up for any changes. I don't know. I'll have to double check. But I don't know if we've we've got that. <laughs> mm. I don't know if it's like an added service. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, has anybody got any questions for Jan and Lisa? What was the problem with the VIX? Sorry, um, what was the problem with the VIX feed? Because we've got a VIX system. Um, I think uh, Jan mentioned that VIX wasn't on board with the, is that the Siri VM feed? Uh, so no, it, it wasn't an issue. It's just uh, we're working closely with them to push operators to uh, upload data. There isn't currently an issue. It's just uh, getting all that sorted so that we'll uh, functionality, the data, the feeds will feed into the uh, service. Right. So they just they just haven't done it yet. Is that is that, is that yeah, what it is? Yeah. Yeah. We, um, Mike, we're we're working with um, bus operators to get their approval to provide you information. So it's the systems there to provide it. We just got to get the approvals from from our customers, basically to feed those that information in. Right. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. I, I just had one other question. I noticed on, on your summary, you mentioned various uh, scheduling systems like Omnibus, Optibus and Ticketer working to assist with um, publishing timetable data and such like. I, I didn't see, um, I don't have any interest in trapeze myself personally, but I know that Areva used trapeze. I didn't see them mentioned, and I know that you know um, the, there are sometimes issues with that system that make it not a little tricky to use, shall we say? Um, are, are they are they not included in in the um, in the in the sort of? Um, obviously, sorts? it's not an extensive list of what we're right. working with, but we're okay. working quite closely with Areva get the data published so don't i'm not aware of any major issues either with trapeze okay all right it must just be locally then never mind <laughs> all right thank you mm. jan did you say that in it are providing you data as well is that right yes we've um uh, what do you mean by data we've uh then an official letter from a DFT asking operators to uh, provide capacity and crowding data uh, to mm -hmm. support the COVID-19 response. And we're also asking them to, uh, now that functionality ha is provided, to push operators to publish before the deadline. Okay, thanks. Okay, any more on BODS then? Any of the areas? No? Okay, 
Um, Naptan project then. Um, so um, unfortunately, um, Adrian can't be with us today um, because the work that he's been doing um, on um, the Alpha uh, project is, is being reviewed today. Um, and so he's tied up with uh, with GDS, um, but uh, I've got some um, notes from him. Um, as Nick's already said, Giuseppe's left, um, and we've got um, James Hutchins um, uh, looking after the, the data team uh, in the department um, on an interim basis. Um, it's a really good choice from our perspective because uh, James knows public transport data um, and has uh, and has dealt with uh, Naptan for a few years, so uh, he's he's got a good background and uh, he's a good bloke. Um, so um, as I say, the the Alpha project being assessed this week um, and going through the uh, the formal assessment today. Um, there's been a couple of working groups since the last um, one of these meetings, which some or all of you have been involved in, um, one or both of them. So the first one was on um, data uploaders, so people that have to manage NAPTAM data um, and, uh, and then upload it. So what they were after um, what some of the problems are, um, and, and outlining a, a bit of a future vision, and then a second one on um, uh, for for people that consume Naptan data, the the users that might put it into applications, or as an authority, you might then use it um, to for timetabling against neighbouring authority stops and things like that. So uh, so we had good turnout for both of those. Um, hopefully people um, were able to get across what they wanted to get across um, as well as finding out a bit more about what's being planned and that sort of thing. Um, if you've still got, uh, if it was really, you know, if, if it would be really helpful if, if Naptan did this, then um, please let me know or, or let Dr. J or Adrian know. Um, and we can uh, we can get it into the uh, into the plans um, because uh, it is still at alpha stage. That's very much proof of concept for some ideas. The next stage is is actually building something that is usable. Um, so the beta phase, um, and that's going to run um, in the early part of next year, all being well, um, assuming they pass the alpha stage. Um, and um, one of the big areas that they're wanting to investigate is accessibility information, um, because it's one of the one of the obvious gaps in Naptown at the moment. Um, and uh, and so there will be some more um, sessions specifically looking at accessibility uh, early in the new year. Um, so uh, those invites will uh, will go out when uh, when we know when they're going to be. Um, has anybody Tim, got any comments Tim, and feedback on those sessions? I I I, I still well um, just to me it sounds it's it it sounds a little bit worrying that Giuseppe's left at this particular time. I don't know. I I'm not aware of what's going on, but it's surely a crucial time with. The ETO World Tool um, no longer being available at the end of December, and this the the new tools presumably won't be ready in time, will they? Um, for for um, checking Naptan data correctness, um, consistency, etc. Um, so um, I I think actually it was probably quite probably a good time for Giuseppe to leave. Um, okay. It's never a good time um, <laughs> when when somebody uh, like him moves on. But 
he'd got the Naptam project off the ground and it was in alpha and it was delivering. Um, so, you know, if he'd left a couple of months earlier, then uh, then there might have been a bit of a glitch. Um, and if he left in a couple of months' time, uh, it would have been a bit of a problem at the start of uh, start of the beta project. Um, so from uh, making sure the project's moving and, and doing stuff, actually, it's probably the, you know, it's a good time to to move and but uh, but Adrian's looking after that and uh, and he's still around um, and he knows he knows as much about Naptan as uh, anybody in the department I think um, so um, you know it's it's in pretty good hands from that point yeah. of view. I, I I think we should feel reassured. Um, when I left, um, I said to the then. A director in charge of everything, a chap called Jonathan Nefgen. What about Naptan? He said, Nap what? And it, it really, really did slip right the way down the departmental state. There's nothing unusual about this. The civil service is like the Borg, but they're very slow reacting boards. So you, you get this time when nothing is happening and you get really worried and nothing happens and nothing. And then they go, oh, yeah, we've got to do something. And then it starts to pick up again. And then you get really full on, you know, fantastic, you know, moving ahead, project management, and then it slides down again. We're just in, we're going to be in a bit of a lull. We may have to be a bit patient, but they will get there. And I totally echo Tim's thing. We are in a lot better situation than we were. Right. People really care about it and they do understand it in the department. And that's, that's what we need. Okay. Uh, just to give um, some, thanks for that yeah. feedback, firstly. And, um, <laughs> Um, on the civil service, and just to say that, um, <laughs> just some feedback from Mira that the um, that we are working with Ito World to migrate people into the DFT Naptan tool. So if anyone does have any feedback, we would like to hear from them. And do let us know if you'd be interested in a Naptan session as well. So we'll, we'll then uh, is the DFT Naptan tool ready already? Then is it, Lisa? actually don't know <laughs> okay. um i think they're still working on it and i still think they're still trying to figure out what's the best way um so it's still kind of a work in progress but we we'll, um but yeah but i think people they are starting the migration so i'm just hoping that there won't yeah, be a I think between, they... between the end of eco world and and the start of the, the new tool that, you, that is currently being um analyzed or no. developed yeah right yeah no so, i don't think they will provide a gap so so the feedback i've got from from adrian um is that um they, they don't have an update on the on the eto world question um the naptan tool anyway um i should actually say at this point in time there is nobody on from me yeah, Peter's well, Pete, on from from Peter, Peter's on. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, 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 there's been quite a lot of discussion about the demise of Ito. Um, Ito, the company, um, uh, ain't going anywhere. Um, I'm not talking. No, I'm talking about the tool. That's all I'm talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. But there's been quite a lot of email and and <laughs> chatter going on about the demise of Ito. Ito <laughs> itself will carry on. It's just the Naptown quality tool that's yeah. uh, that's coming to the end of its life. So Peter, Peter's not having to look for another job. <laughs> no, I'm not wishing that on him. <laughs> so, uh, there's uh, still the bus stop checker tool available if anybody finds that useful in the meantime that we created originally. So I can share that link if that's useful. And we've seen yeah, a that, is, of... that is useful, Alex. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a of yeah, um, it is, it is useful. I think there's some things on that, that that it can that it can't do that the other one can. That sometimes you want you you want you you ideally want want both probably. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, the department continuing to work on the uh, on the open NAPTAM tool, which they released onto GitHub, um, which um, Hopefully, will will form a uh, a good basis for for things going forward. Um, not everybody 
has got the right permissions and skills to use it because it is uh, more technical. Um, but um, as part of the ongoing engagement on that, um, um, Adrian does want people to talk to him about what they want to see in that tool. Um, but there are other things out there. So as Alex has said, passenger have got their tool. Um, there's, uh, there's other tools out there. Um, so Rob um, is looking to get consortiums of people together, aren't you? I think, Rob? That's right. Yeah, I've been talking to, a, I think, a couple of people who might actually be on this call. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I've been around Naptan and PTIC for years and years. Um, you know, I, I want to help out if I can. Um, you know, I'm capable of writing tools that process Naptan and do validity checks or whatever checks we need to, to do. Um, but, you know, these things cost money to develop and actually a lot of money to host if it's a web service. Um, you know, if there's sufficient interest from people and, you know, we can have a quick whip round, then um, I'd be more than happy to put something together, even if it's just on a temporary basis, you know, to cover a few months um, in between the ETO tool disappearing and whatever is officially going to replace them being ready. Um, yeah, just, just get in touch with me um, or indeed get in touch with him and he'll point you towards me and, you know, we can talk about it. Um, I'm happy to work with anybody, really. Perhaps I can just say from the ETO point of view, we're very pleased that uh, others are, are are taking things on because uh, we've we felt for some while that our, our tool was written a long time ago and it really needs to be or would have needed to be updated and um, brought into the, the, the more modern specs and things. So that, that's really why the line's been put in the sand that something needs to be, that be done, decision taken. Um, so, um, Peter, can you confirm that the that the Naptan tool will go in December? Um, well, um, I don't. I I think the discussions are continuing. I, I think that, that I'm hearing uh, sort of a mood of somehow there will be a, something will be bridged, but I think there is a a definite mood to say that actually from the ETO point of view we have given um, one extension after another it's been going on for, for so long um, and it, it's it's sort of run on uh, in ways that, that don't fit in with the current way we do things so we want to change it we want to adopt it and I mean we haven't particularly been asked to rewrite it so therefore um, you know, we've got plenty of other things to do so therefore we, we really Think the decision needs to be made, um, and that's why the sort of rather sort of hard line in the sand has been been put. But not to say that people aren't continuing to talk, but it, it, that is the reason for the um, the. I mean, actually, at the same time, that the, the has a it is the end of the contract period with DFT for it as well. So um, you know, the any something ongoing would. Uh, I mean. It's technically possible to leave things running, of course, and they still would. But um, it, it's that's why the issue has been sort of uh, addressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, the final thing from Adrian um, on that, Tan, is that there's been a few reports that when the web pages were um, updated, um, a couple of months ago, um, links to the uh, to the Naptan validator tool um, were broken. Um, they've now been fixed, so hopefully it's a bit easier for people to find again. Uh, any questions on Naptan? No. OK. Thank you on that one, then. Um, next up, we've got Richard. Welcome. He's going to bring us up to speed on the Transport for the North projects. Yeah. Um, so I think, Tim, you circulated uh, some notes in the, uh, in the, with the papers. Um, 
So I guess um, I can take you through that, what's in the paper, if, if you want, uh, or take questions. I don't know how you want to, to run it. Uh, probably a quick, uh, quick, quick headlines to, okay. uh, to remind people. Yeah, OK, all right. So in terms of our disruptions tool, uh, so just a reminder, that's helping local authorities in the north to open up disruption information in the Sirius X. Uh, format. So we now have all of the metropolitan LTAs in the north uh, using the tool. Um, so we've got that data now being passed through to our open data hub um, for uh, data consumers um, to integrate into their customer facing products and services. Um, so um, Move It are taking that data as an example um, and sort of passing that through into their, uh, their journey planner and other platforms. Um, and we're working with other developers to sort of achieve the same uh, the same outcome. Um, bus times uh, are one of those, and also transit have started to use uh, the data as well. Uh, and like I say, there's a number of other developers that we're, we're engaged with at present um, to do that. Um, focus really is uh, working with our authorities that are using the tool to try and do that in a consistent way. Um, so we're developing some. Uh, definition around consistency, what that looks like um, in terms of the types of uh, disruption information, whether that's planned and unplanned and across multi modes, but also about um, within within those parameters how uh, how each authority use the tool. Um, so we're working through that um, at the moment with the authorities, uh, which is quite interesting, working across the various uh, city regions. Um, We've got some developments that are being done by uh, ETO at the present, uh, and they'll be delivered uh, in the next uh, month or two, uh, which will further assist our local authorities uh, in using the tool um, and some reporting features that are part of that work. So that's the disruptions side. In terms of fares, um, so we've made real advances with the fares. Project. So, as a reminder, this is helping operators to provide uh, fair information in the required NetEx format. Um, so, we've passed um, the DFT architectural change board, um, and I guess that has given assurance that the service has been built with no technical architectural issues. That was something the DFT was requiring uh, assurance of um, as part of their acceptance criteria. Um, we've also passed the uh, the GDS private beta service assessment, uh, which is a big, a big milestone for us. Again, that's another um, acceptance criteria um, point for DFT. Um, that now allows us to move into uh, to public beta from from private. Um, we've actually changed the name now as part of that sort of getting ready for the public beta. It's now called the Create Fairs Data um, Service. It was previously known as the Fairs Data Build Tool. Um, we've now concluded all of our roadmap uh, developments, um, so we've been sort of focusing on lots of user experience adjustments in the last couple of sprints, so they've all been done. Uh, we're now concentrating on um, works to transfer knowledge uh, and hand over activities uh, from PFN over to DFT. The service will hand over to uh, DFT uh, on the 11th of December. Um, the service is actually live now. We've sort of entered a soft launch phase. Um, the address uh, where you can sort of register and start to create NetEx is in the, the note that we've circulated uh, with the papers. Um, but DFT will then take the service uh, and roll that out nationally um, next year um, with a number of business change and communications that are, um, that are sort of scheduled to happen. Um, so yeah, that's uh, from a TFM perspective. Um, it's nice that we've actually took the service from sort of uh, requirements through to a live, fully working service and uh, supporting operators to comply with the legislation. I think that's all I want to say, really. Uh, anyone got any comments or questions? Uh, Richard, I have a quick question um, yeah. regarding the Fair tool. Um, is it available as an API um, or is it purely working through the web service as an end user? Um, I only ask because it seems to be the only show in town in terms of turning 
a fair triangle into NetEx. Um, and if that were made available as an API, either by yourselves or by the DFT, that would open up possibilities for lots of other tools to integrate with it. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the code with with bots. Yeah, the, the, the code is in GitHub. Uh, so it's openly available. That's one of the requirements as part of the GDS um, standard. So that's that's there available. Um, Fantastic. That's good to know. I shall take a look. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're just in the process of transferring it over from um, our GitHub to the DFTs. So just just bear with us on that um, for the time being. But that, that, no, that, that's one of the activities that we've been focusing on as part of the handover. But it is there. It's openly available. Um, and obviously, there's the user interface. And I think with us, since we've done this soft launch, um, we've I think there's been over 300 NetEx files that have been created using the tool. Um, so operators are now actively using the service and creating NetEx um, for real, so uh, which is great. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. That's really good progress. Excellent. We've only been talking about it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, these things always take far longer than uh, than you initially lay out on a project plan, Richard. You should realise <laughs> that by now. <laughs> well, I, I was there really to uh, to help set the scene about what we should do with it rather than delivering it. But because of change of resources, I was asked to then uh, step in uh, over the summer. But uh, so it's been quite quite rewarding in, in, in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any more questions for Richard? No. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Um, stop announcements then. Um, so um, we at the last meeting um, effectively signed off the work that had been done over the summer um, to to identify um, short common name. Um, as our suggested way of, uh, of of dealing with stop announcements, um, the um, update from the department um, on the the wider accessible information um, bit that that was feeding into um, goes back to. Um, over two years ago now, so summer 2018, um, when um, they consulted uh, on the plans to make the um, accessible information regulations for those eager um, watchers of consultations, you'll have uh, noticed that they've not actually um, responded to that consultation yet, um, where they were trying to work out um, how to make provision of audio and visible information on on local bus and coach services um in into into regulation um so it was a very, very wide range of um responses and perspectives um and they um continuing to review those um proposals um and um, they do hope to be able to respond formally to the consultation uh, and confirm the next steps soon. Um, a lot of the last couple of years has been uh, spent dealing with uh, PSVR, so accessible vehicles, um, rules and regulations, and, and getting the industry um, ready um, and compliant with that. But um, they they do have a project manager and the team now that's that's looking at that. Um, I can uh, I can tell you, um, they they're very grateful for the work that we did in identifying the short common name, um, and um, whilst they're not yet able to formally um, respond, um, it is being taken forward into the consultation. Um, and the and the response that'll uh, that'll come out, as I say, shortly. So um, it it's it's gone into the civil service um, machine. Uh, it will come out um, in the 
in the time scales that uh, that they can uh, they can work with. Uh, there's a lot going on in the civil service at the moment, um, a lot of change um, and a lot of work going on at the last minute with uh, with COVID and Brexit and, and all those other things. So uh, it's it's understandable that there's a bit of a delay in some of these things, um, but uh, but they're on with it. Um, and um, as we get to know more, I'll circulate that. Um, on any questions on that? No. Okay. Um, linked to that, um, Artig's doing some work um, with the department on the accessible um, information regulations, looking at um, some of the technical aspects of how you provide audio and visual audio information and visual information on bus, um, and we're looking at um, how you might measure success as a passenger sat on a bus. Um, so looking at things like visibility displays and intelligibility and, and volume of, of audio announcements. Um, and so um, there is a workshop for implementers um, in a couple of weeks. Private invitations have gone out to that. And there's a survey um, to, to gather current best practice that um, has been out to a few people and about to go out quite widely um, so if you think you've got best practice installed on your vehicle I don't think we've, we haven't got any operators actually um, we've got a couple of suppliers that might have something to say so uh, please do respond um, to that um, with what you do now and, and how you measure because um, that will end up in regulations as well um, and we want to get it right. There's no good setting something and creating a set of rules that's uh, impossible to meet or too easy to meet. The, it doesn't actually mean anything for the passenger. Um, so um, any questions about that or anything to do with accessible information? No. Nope. Okay, um, FODS issues log. Um, the last one was circulated um, with the uh, papers for this. Um, there's not that many updates that are going on. Um, most of the things that are being dealt with now are fairly um, small and minor. Most of the big things have been. Um, resolved. Um, has anybody got any questions on any of them? The, the list is reviewed with the uh, with the department on a regular basis by uh, Julie and the operator digital initiative. Um, if you find problems or challenges or you've got questions about uh, anything BODS related, then um, let me or Julie know and we can uh, add it onto the list. Hi, sorry, Tim. Um, just a quick question on, on BODS. I've heard one or two people, I mean, I'm not um, dealing with it personally, but I've heard one or two people saying that they're having trouble getting stuff onto BODS because they expect an end date for all the services uploaded on there. And then there's been some thing back from KPMG saying, oh, it doesn't like the 0999 oh, 1999 or whatever end dating. So operators saying, well, how can we spot, you know, how can we send them if there's, if they're wanting an end date when we actually aren't ending them? You know, we don't know when they're going to end. Um, so there is um, some advice that has been given to or is available for operators on end dates. Um, it was discussed in the Artig webinar on the BODS profile a month ago or so now, I think it was. Um, right. so it's worth having a look on that. I don't know whether 
Lisa or Jan have got anything to say about end dates? Tim. I think that issue's been oh, resolved. On. Hold on a sec. I thought, yeah, that, I thought that was my understanding as well. It was a bug that was addressed. If I understand the question. So, the two main ways which these can be updated, it may be that you wish to add an end date for the file that corresponds to the service that's being cancelled. Um, the end date or expiry date should correspond to the final date that the service is running but it, this is where you somebody's registering a service and there isn't an end date per se because it'll it'll run until somebody um ends the registration so typically people have used 2099 or 2999 as, as the year that's right isn't it graham so yeah, yeah, I believe so. I mean, as is I think oh one oh one three thousand, but all, various people try different days and they all get rejected. Right. Okay. If, if right. that's still can going just, on, um, if you can just email and let and let us know. Sorry. Yeah, just uh, if you could send over an email, we can see if we can answer that question for you. Yeah. No, okay, I'll feed it back to the people who are asking me. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Tim, I think the um. The idea is that if there is no end date, you don't put an end date in the file. Um, Trans Exchange supports an empty end date. Yeah. Um, so I think, from what I understand from the uh, the BODS team, they're expecting either a sensible end date, so perhaps one within the next 12 months or so, if it's a service that you know is going to end. And if the uh, the idea is that it's a service that runs in quotes until further notice um then the end date should be empty um and the trans exchange format supports leaving an end date empty and that's that's what they're expecting to see on the WODS platform okay thank you rob yeah okay any other Questions or thoughts on the issues log? No. Okay. Um, travel line projects then. Um, I don't know whether Amy's managed to get her mic working yet. You're unmuted, but I suspect there's a permissions issue of somewhere, Amy. Is this any better? Ah, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, sorry about that. I, yeah, I think I had my headphones in with the inbuilt microphone, but that microphone wasn't working, so I've taken those out, and hopefully there's not any horrible feedback. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I just thought I'd go back to the actions to start with, because there were a few actions that you raised with my name on, I think. Um, so the first one, I didn't realise I had an action because I only just had the chance to look over the uh, minutes of the last meeting. But um, I think it was asking about kind of how we can provide insight into the data integrity in TNDS. Um, I think now we've added um, when you download the TNDS and you get the service report that has a list of all the services that are in that week um, we've added an extra column now that will say whether it's provided by local authority or provided by operator so as we're kind of moving across to more operator provided data that will give you um, some clues on the kind of source and origins of the data um, I'm not sure whether we're kind of hoping to get that um, as part of something that will also appear on the a journey planner as, as well for kind of customers of the data rather than just open data users as well but we're kind of trying to add these things in and um, probably looking to to create a kind of TNDS issues list similar to the uh, OPDR bods list where we can kind of uh, keep track of 
of any kind of shortcomings in the data. So where, if there are any gaps opening up in that um, kind of transition period as, as local authorities might stop providing data and operators are providing data to bonds and we're kind of in this transition, we can kind of keep uh, keep people aware of, of where TNDS is at um, with that. So we're looking to kind of set something like that up shortly. Um, and the other action was about, uh, I think this is specific um, to Ian Barra, Lancashire County Council about providing um, 2.4, um, which, yeah, just for context, obviously, um, TNDS gets the data from local authorities via the travel line regions, but um, in the northeast and northwest, we've got a slightly different structure um, where we consolidate those regions in house. So, Ian, as a local authority, will provide his data directly to me, um, which in the moment I think he does. He, produces 2.4 and 2.1 and then he's doing it twice in order to send 2.1 to me so I think he was just asking whether he could send 2.4 to me um, but we have had a separate conversation I've asked him for a, a test set of his 2.4 so that particular uh, action is in hand um, I think those were all the actions with my name against them hopefully there's not any more lurking um, That's it, yeah Cool. Uh, in terms of any updates from Travel Line, um, I think the, the one that I can share now is um, the call centre contract, which um, the date for that is uh, 1st of April 2021, and we are replacing the current call centre contract. We're moving to um, the call centre, contact centre Cymru. Um, from 2021 so um, it'll still be seven days a week and it'll be um, 7 a.m till 8 p.m um, matching what what the call center contact center can offer now um, but I think we will be writing out to um, people soon that anyone that kind of advertises the number to just clarify the opening times and things like that with them so they're giving out the, the correct information um, in time for when that changes but that's uh, April 2021. Um, I think that's the latest news that we've got of uh, developments and changes. Um, Pres presumably, Amy, the numbers stay in the same, and you're moving yeah. that to the new call centre. Yes, yeah, the number will, will be the same. Um, it's just the, yeah, will now be dealt with by the team at the contact centre there. Okay, any questions for Amy or Travel Line? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Amy. Cheers. Um so then um E standards development, what's happening um in standards not just in Europe really. Um so um Siri, um, the update um, is continuing. It's nearly ready technically. Um, as ever, um, there's always a bit of a last minute push when you actually try and test um, what's been being developed and the, and the, the updates to the schemas. Um, always uh, triggers a few problems and, and need to rework a few bits, um, but that's coming to the end now. Um, we don't think there's anything breaking in it, um, so it can still be a 2.1 rather than needing to uh, to, to upgrade to, to version two. Um, but uh, but there's some interesting stuff in there, um, everything from uh, from support for alternative modes. Um, so you know, if, if you want to provide real time data about cycle sharing and and whether there's bikes in the you know in, in the in the hub and things like that available then uh, then you're going to be able to do that um there's quite a lot of changes to the way that um disruptions through Siri sx um 
work, a lot of improvements, making it a lot simpler um, and aligning it to the way that um, most of us passengers expect things to go in terms of, so, you know, the train has broken down, the consequence is you can't make your journey and, and this is what your alternative is, rather than the, the current um, more system-y type um, approach to, uh, to to doing it, which takes some getting your head around, um, but it's non-breaking changes before Richard goes, oh my word, what have we done? We've, we're have uh, gonna have to redo everything. Um, so um, one of the big um, things that um, was being planned even before COVID was improved handling of um, occupancy, which historically has been really quite limited. Um, but you can now um, pass information occupancy all the way down to um, the fact that there are uh, two free seats in Coach F in first class if you really wanted. Um, and it's in the downstairs bit of a, of the carriage. So uh, a lot of it driven by rail, but it's all very applicable to, uh, to bus and coach as well. Um, so that's providing a much richer set of data than we've got available now on occupancy um, and um, reducing the amount of data that needs to be transferred with subscriptions. So there's more filtering options um, and the filtering options that are already there um, will be much more effective um, as well. Um, so that's Siri, that's probably, and, and once that starts to um, be properly documented, um, there will be um, some, uh, some update notes coming out from, from Artig um, on those changes and, and how to take advantage of, of them. Um, any questions on Siri? No, okay. Um, TPEG, um, whilst technically not a public transport standard and, and all about roads, um, there's a whole series of updates to um, that um, that are um, in the process of approval and um, new work items being agreed um, to, to carry on with the development of, of that. Um, a lot of that's been driven by the need to support things like um, um, connected and autonomous vehicles um, and support for, uh, for, for the sort of the infrastructure and the communications that's needed for that. Um, NetEx, um, there's a relatively minor update to that going through um, to support alternative modes. Pretty much every um, data standard in the trans model families going through the update to, to support alternative modes um, as it cascades down. Um, and um, probably the most useful thing um, for, for us is, is the work that an old, a group called Data for PT is, is doing. Um, so um, it is funded by um, European um, Union funds, so we can't be directly um, involved, but, uh, but there's a number of our experts like Nick Knowles involved um, privately. Um, and, and this is all about how to adopt um, the Transmodel family of standards providing advice and guidance um, on, on how to adopt it and support in the adoption um, and the development of, of uh, national profiles, a bit like we've got with the, with the BODS profile now and the Siri SX profile from Transport for the North. Um, so rolling those out, um, but also coming up with a European public transport information profile that enables um, uh, the, the minimum set of data to be to be moved around um, to help with journey planning and, and live data updates for for cross-border services, um, which is relevant to us 
um, because uh, we do have services that cross uh, into uh, into France on on the rail network, but there's also some um, scheduled um, coach services as well, and as well as um, over in Northern Ireland, um, cross border between uh, Northern uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic. So um, those are still so. Um, it's in the data for PT is is in the process of moving from um, the planning stage into into delivery phase. So there's not a lot to physically point you at at the moment, but give it a couple of months and and they'll start to be uh, churning stuff out. Any questions on that? Any questions on? Any of the trans model family? No. Okay. Um, there's been no new issues raised on any standards or anything. So um, there's nothing to report on the issues log, um, which takes us on to any other business. Anybody got anything that they want to chip in? Ask. No. I've got one. I've got one thing. Just. Uh, I should know this, but and apologies that I'm showing my ignorance. But you know the transitional period for for bots. What what is being allowed to to fall into that transitional period? Is it just fares? Is it or is it other things as well? So um, on the slide that um, Jan and Lisa went through, um, they said that they're in the process of writing to operators to to update them because at the moment the um, regulation says that uh, this year twenty twenty is the transition year. Um, but in light of uh, COVID and the battle for uh, for survival, um, they're uh, extending that so that 2021 becomes a transitional year, and they'll they'll slowly be doing more and more communications and, and putting more and more pressure on operators to um, to to comply and supply data. But there won't be any enforcement action taken. Well, that's my understanding, anyway. Yeah, so that's that correct. Right. So does that mean that operators could effectively, I'm not saying they will, and um, but in, in theory, they could almost put their feet up for another year and then panic again at this time next year? I, d I don't think that's the approach that the OTC will take. I think those who can publish should be publishing by the deadline and yeah. from next year you know the conversations will begin with operators about what their plans are to publish and why they're not able to do that yet and you know there they has to i think there has to be sort of mitigation reasons they won't be any enforcement next year but um operators will have to explain what they're doing or what they're planning to do okay but this this um, transitional period applies to everything uh timetable yeah. location and and, and fares. it's not just for the more difficult one perhaps or whatever that applies to to all the data sets right okay thank you any more i think just to um there was something that came up at one of the recent meetings which was the inclusion of registered school service in, under bobs and it was confirmed that if a school service is registered, then it falls under the remit and it has to be in, regardless of whether it's closed or not. Yeah, I just I am discussing that with our lawyer at the moment. Um, so potentially, uh, well, we will be taking probably the view that if so, we, we weren't aware there was a lot of voluntary registration, essentially, with school services. So that's something that's quite new to us. Um, it's not something that had come up before in discussion. So um, as, um, our lawyer has taken the reading that if, you know, in terms of like registering a service under Section 6 of the Transport Act, if it's been voluntary registered, then it hasn't, I suppose, been registered in the true sense. 
um, of the legislation. So like, so likely those, so those closed school services that have been voluntary registered won't have to publish under bonds, but those that have that are required to be registered under section six will publish, will have to publish under bonds. But I will be right. sending out an update through um, the newsletter. It will be in the implementation guide and um, yeah, I'm sending out an email to the stakeholders, but I'm just clarifying that further with the lawyer. So when's that confirmation going to be coming out? It's just we, you know, it's the 3rd of December and they're supposed to be in the system by the end of December. Yeah, no, soon, it'll definitely come soon. But um, definitely any school services that do fall within scope of the regulations, they're definitely not going to be, I suppose, the first that, you know, that, that in terms of enforcement that, that we would go, we'll go after, but, you know, that um, will be the first in queue. So, so yeah, so we just need to clarify. It's, it's something new that we, we weren't aware there was a lot of sort of voluntary registration or all different types of services that had to be registered. Um, so we're still just trying to understand what's kind of going on in that area and come back with, I suppose, a sort of wider uh, description of what that regulation means then and who it captures. Because I suppose a lot of people might not realise, you know, it's sort of bonds would uh, that you fall under the scope of the regulations if you're a local registered service. So we're just trying to make sure that we understand what that means for the different types of school services. Yeah, because there's quite a lot of complex history with registering school services and, and whether they should appear on uh, the travel line journey plan or anything like that and actions been taken against operators by the ATC in the past. Um, at least I don't know whether it's ever ended up in a public inquiry but there's certainly been some very hard conversations with operators where it's a registered service they say but it's school and the fact that it it's registered means that they need to allow customers on and if a registered service isn't on the travel line journey planner then it's been deemed as as not open to the public and therefore not eligible for BSOG so there's there's quite a lot of complexity there and it's worth I think Lisa making sure that the OTC are involved in those conversations um I well I suppose we will discuss it uh, with them but I think first with our lawyers we just want to make sure um that we understand, you know, who, who, which operator is definitely in scope, so that we can go back to everybody as soon as possible on this. Um, so I think there will be some sort of school services that are in scope, and we do say that even if it is a closed school service and it's not required by bonds legislation to publish, that this, you know, that, that they still can publish. So, um, yeah, so we're just gonna just make sure when we send that final sort of description out to everybody because I've already sent something out already but we are refining it further so I just want to make sure it covers as many of the different types of situations because there are questions about BSOG and um, services operating from private schools um, academies etc yeah it would be really useful if that advice was circulated to local authorities as well as operators because it's not all sometimes it authorities find it quite hard to find out what operators are being told yes so it will go what's um it'll kind of go hand in hand with the publication of the implementation guide so in the newsletter that we that will be released we're going to highlight the school's definition um and yeah, it'll be updated in the guidance and then hopefully that should be enough for everyone to go by. Obviously, there's still the, you know, if, if someone's really not sure, they should definitely seek their own leg legal advice to make sure that they have, you know, whether they meet them, whether they know they're an operator in scope or not. Okay. Okay. Any other other business? Um, I just wanted to ask. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, what? Um, sorry. Um, we've started publishing data this week. Um, on behalf of um some small ops, and um need to come up with 
some wording which um, forms an agreement between us as a local authority and the small operators. If anybody else is in the same um, in the same boat and would like to share wording, um, I'd be very grateful because I know the DFT have said that there um, there isn't going to be any template as such. Um, so if anyone's in that position, um, I would be well uh, welcome to everyone to get in touch. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just to say, just to say we did have an agent mode um, session and that was discussed recently and I think an operator shared, um, or a, an example was shared. So do reach out to our business change team and they can maybe put you in touch with other people that have done something similar already so is that then um murray yes yeah okay yeah so yeah unfortunately we cannot as a government sort of get too involved in sort of contractual obligations so that's hence no template but um do you think it's really great if industry can sort of communicate with each other to kind of um yeah discuss and i suppose and agree best practice brilliant thank you Brian. Yeah, sorry, that was just a minor update. I've just had a, a response on the question about end dates in the in the trans exchange files. I'm told our contract is, is working on behalf think, of Hertfordshire County Council and he's, his understanding was that you can have a blank end date or a, a valid end date. However, what he's saying is that it fails at validation in both trans exchange and BODS, so he's waiting for a response from KPMG. In trans exchange 99990909 is considered an open end date, but that's not valid in BODS apparently. That's what the update I've had. Okay, thank you, Graham. Okay, if there's nothing else, then um, in terms of next meetings, the normal calendar would suggest that it's towards the uh, end of February. Um, I think at that point still, we probably need to be planning for uh, for a virtual session rather than a um, a face to face, unfortunately, because uh, I don't think enough of us will be um, uh, inoculated um, by by then. Um, so um, we'll um, I'll I'll have a chat with Therese and we'll come up with a a date towards the end of uh, February. And um, unless there's anything else as the final, any other, any other business, uh, I'd like to thank those of you that have uh, presented and the rest of you for attending um, and uh, wish you all a, uh, a very happy Christmas and New Year if I don't see or talk to you um, beforehand. Thanks, thank Jim. you.